There are certain people who seem to have been destined to live their lives within a specific time and place. They embody the tone and feeling of their era until the two are intertwined and inseparable. The world that emerged from the collapse was an untamed and treacherous place. It was at once magnificent and bleak, simple and complex. It was a world made for a being like Cade Six. As an exomind of mankind's golden age, Cade was once human, born sometime prior to the collapse. In ancient times, he served as a soldier to some forgotten cause, until his mounting debts overwhelmed him. Eager to secure desperate individuals for their developing EXO program, the Clovis Bray Corporation approached Cade with an offer to wipe his debts clean. His personality was uploaded into an artificial life form, and his life, as he had known it, ended. Now the property of Clovis Bray, Cade was forbidden from contacting those from his previous life, most notably his wife and son, whom he had nicknamed Ace. As was common procedure, Cade's mind was periodically reset, in which associative access to his memories was removed or impaired. Each reset acted as a kind of rebirth, and Cade was known as Cade 1 through Cade 5 during this period. In an attempt to preserve his past lives and the memory of his family, Cade kept a detailed journal, intending to one day give it to his son. This grounded him and provided purpose. By his own accounts, it helped him through the toughest moments and made him a better man. But as more and more of his life was lost to him, the journal became the only record of who he was. It also became a warning. In entries specifically addressed to his future selves, he admitted that he couldn't be sure his memories were real, or merely a delusion crafted to make himself whole. Cade was one of the few surviving beings to have witnessed the collapse of mankind, and his journal recounts the memory of being restrained by a shadowy creature in the ruins of a devastated world. He was awoken some time later by what would become his ghost, a reflection of Cade's own personality named Sundance. This was the birth of Cade Six. As a guardian and later hunter, Cade became extraordinarily proficient in neutralizing threats to the last city. During prolonged expeditions into the wilderness, hunting for resources and technology, a close friendship developed between Cade and fellow hunter Andor Brask. Equally brash and prone to gambling, the two hunters formed a wager on which of them would kill the infamous fallen warlord, Tanix the Scarred. Cade would win, and as per the terms of the dare, Brask accepted a kind of early retirement. He became the vanguard of the last city's hunters, accepting a higher status within the Guardians, but one that prevented him from taking part in field missions. Tanix the Scarred, however, had survived his encounter with Cade and Brask, and murdered Brask in an act of revenge. In the memory of his fallen friend, Cade reluctantly accepted the position of vanguard and would don Brask's cloak for the rest of his life. Cade was uniquely competent in his role as vanguard, but he deeply missed the action and camaraderie that could only be found by operating outside the city's walls. Despite his restlessness, he found some measure of vicarious excitement in helping those guardians who, like him, preferred to ignore standard operating procedures. Perhaps his most famous indirect contribution was in forming the plan that ultimately defeated Oryx, the Taken King. Cade Six was most at home in the wilds, or the chaos of a desperate situation. During the Red War against the Cabal dictator Dominus Gull, Cade was again instrumental, and the last city endured only through his efforts. Cade Six would ultimately meet his end, in an attempt to bring order to the piracy rampant throughout the debris field known as the Reef. Deep within the prison of Elders, the traitor guardian Aldrin Sov orchestrated a mass breakout and executed Cade Six when he attempted to intervene. After many centuries, Cade was finally reunited with his son, in one form or another. A guardian of the last city 
an exomind of the Golden Age, a reckless gambler, and cunning hunter, the life of Cade Six was full of contradictions. He was often seen as laid back, carefree, and especially bored with his duties as Vanguard. Even during the darkest moments, he maintained a light-hearted and jester-like attitude that might have equally inspired or annoyed those around him. Despite this, however, he took his role of Vanguard seriously and worked just as hard as any who ever held the position. Though always cognizant of the image he presented, he took purposeful steps to conceal this. He was also an exceptional gunslinger, and in Cade's hands, his signature weapon, the Ace of Spades, was one of the deadliest weapons in the solar system. But above all, Cade was someone who thrived in chaos and had a trained eye for identifying and exploiting the opportunities that chaos presented. Even in death, his force of personality looms as large over the last city as it ever did in life. There are certain people who seem to have been destined to live their lives within a specific time and place. They embody the tone and feeling of their era until the two are intertwined and inseparable. With the passing of Cade Six into legend, perhaps this is in some small way the end of the age he was meant for. And without him, the solar system can go on to enter a new era in which the talents of a gunslinger might not be needed. In Dossier, the Templin Institute investigates the legendary figures from alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. Thank you.